current carrying coils or inductors store energy inside them and in this video we'll derive an expression for it. But before we begin, here's my question. How do I convince myself that these coils really store energy? I mean, just because the textbook is saying that, I can't believe it. <laughs> so for that, let's take a circuit which I've stolen from our previous video with an inductor and a bulb in series connected across a battery. We saw that when you close the switch, current slowly starts rising. It doesn't instantly rise. And that happens because inductors fight changes in the current. And if this concept is not familiar, it'd be a great idea to go back and watch our previous video on self-inductance. Highly recommend it. But anyways, eventually, once the current rises to its max value, then it's no longer changing. Inductor no longer fights it. And we have a steady situation. Now, imagine we are in such a situation where the current is no longer changing. It's reached its max value. My question now is, what happens if I suddenly make the battery disappear? And the way I do that is by short circuiting it. You might know when you create a short, current tends to take the path of least resistance and now a short has almost zero resistance. So all the current would flow through this. It's like effectively removing battery from our primary circuit. So if I short circuit it, it's like I've removed the battery. So imagine I do it, I remove the battery. My question to you is what's gonna happen to our bulb? Will it stop glowing immediately? Or will it take some time and it'll keep glowing for some time? Or will it keep glowing forever? What do you think will happen? Can you pause and ponder upon this? Okay, my first thoughts are, it is the battery that was maintaining the current. So if I remove the battery, the current should instantly die out and the bulb should instantly stop glowing. But that's not what happens. We find that the bulb will take some time before slowly turning off, even if there is no battery. Why, why is that happening? Because remember, inductors hate changes in the current. Here, the current is trying to decrease and go to zero. And we've seen that whenever there is a change in the current, the inductors will induce an EMF or voltage. Now, the moment we remove the battery, the current immediately starts decreasing, and therefore, immediately, there will be a voltage induced across the inductor. Another quick question. Do you think this induced voltage supports the current, or do you think it opposes the current? Well, again, my first thoughts from this equation is, well, EMF induced will oppose the current. That's what the minus sign is saying, right? No, no, no. Remember, inductors have no problems with the current. They have a problem with changing current. And so they oppose the change. So if the current is increasing, they'll try to decrease it. But in our case, the current is decreasing, so the inductor will try to increase it. So in this case, to increase the current, it will support the current. So it'll act like a battery and support the current. And as a result, the current will flow for some time, but it can't keep maintaining that. Eventually, dI by dt will go to zero. And so with time, the EMF decreases, the current decreases, and eventually the bulb runs out. So this means even after removing the battery for a small time, the bulb is still glowing. So during that time, who is providing the energy to the bulb? There's no longer a battery. Who is maintaining the current? There's no longer a battery. Ah, it's the inductor. Therefore, the inductor must have had energy inside of it. And that's how we can convince ourselves that inductors carrying current must have energy inside of them. So the next question is, what's the expression for that energy? First, I wanna show you a shortcut derivation using a cool analogy. Inductors carrying current are very similar to masses having velocity. At first you may like, what? what's the connection? How can you even compare them? But let's look at their equations and the equation will help us understand. When you push on an object, right? You know from Newton's third law, it pushes back. And so let's write the expression for that reaction force. That reaction force, F reaction, is going to be equal and opposite, negative, to the force that you apply on it. But what is the force that you apply on it? From Newton's second law, we know that force you apply, you apply on it is mass of that object multiplied by the acceleration of that object, and that acceleration is dV over dt. Look at these two equations, how similar they are. So the induced EMF is like the reaction force opposite. So the inductance is like the inertia. So just like how inertia of the mass resists changes in velocity, electrical inertia, inductance, resists changes in the current. And we know, so if we now look at this comparison, we know that moving masses have energy inside of them and the expression is, it's a kinetic energy, half mv squared. So from this, can you guess 
what the expression for the energy stored in an inductor could be. Can you guess what that's gonna be? Well, if you use the comparison, it's going to be half times inertia, which is in our case, electrical inertia, inductance, times instead of velocity squared, it's going to be current squared. And that's exactly what you will end up getting if you derive it. How cool is that? In fact, this is how I, you, this is how I remember the expression for energy stored inside an inductor. But this is kind of cheating because we thought deeply about physics and found this connection, but that's not a derivation. So let, now let's go ahead and formally derive it using this circuit. So let's go back to the time when we just removed our battery. We know for the next few, I don't know, maybe milliseconds or microseconds, there will still be, the bulb will still be glowing. And during that time, the energy would be transferred to the bulb by the inductor. So since it's the inductor that's transferring energy to the bulb, if I can figure out how much is the total energy transferred to the bulb, that must be the total energy inside the inductor. If the inductor has transferred, let's say total of 100 joules, then I know the inductor had 100 joules to begin with. And so from this I can say that the total energy inside the inductor must equal the total energy that was transferred to the bulb. But how do you calculate that? Well, anytime you wanna talk about energies, when it comes to circuits, we fall back to one and only one equation. The power transferred, that is energy transferred per second, always equals voltage times the current. And in our case, since the energy is transferred by the inductor, uh, the voltage will be that of the inductor, voltage across the inductor, and this will be the current through the inductor. And so we know how much is the energy being transferred per second. We know the expression for the voltage. We also, we, we know what, what we need to calculate, the total energy transferred. So although it's a little tricky to put this all together, I highly encourage you to pause at this moment and see if you can try this yourself first. It's completely okay if you make some mistakes or get stuck somewhere, then you watch it, then your learning would be much, much better. So I'll highly encourage you to pause and give it a shot yourself first. Okay, so the first thing I do is I have an equation, let me go ahead and substitute. So I know the voltage across the inductor is minus L di over dt times the current I. Okay, what's next? Well, one immediate thought is, since this is energy transferred per second, if I want to calculate the total energy transferred, maybe just multiply it by the total time taken, right? The total time for which the bulb was glowing. So can I just multiply this number with the total time and would that give me the total energy? Very close to the final, you know, very close to it, but that's not how you do it. Why? That's important because these are some of the mistakes that we can make. Why can't I just do it that way? because that would only work if the power was a constant. For example, if the inductor was transferring 100 joules per second, and that was constant, then in next 10 seconds, I know the energy would, total energy would be 100 times 10. But here, the power is not a constant, right? The current is continuously decreasing. And so you can't just multiply it by time, you have to use calculus. And it's for that reason, Instead of directly saying it, I can what I can do is I can say, this is energy transferred per second, and so I can write this as du over dt. That equals minus L di over dt times i. So you understand why you have to use calculus? Because sometimes I used to wonder why sometimes we use du or dt, sometimes we don't. Because that's the thing, because it's, it's changing. And now we can cancel out the dt's. And so what is this new equation saying? It's saying when the current changes by a small amount, the, what is the small amount of energy transferred? That is this number, okay? So now if I want to calculate the total energy transferred when the current changes by a large amount from I to zero, now we need to integrate this. So again, feel free to pause at any moment and integrate it. Okay, so let's do that. So now that we completely understand, it's important to understand what's going on. So if I now that we completed, now I have to integrate this, and I'm integrating with respect to the current, and from where to where? I'm integrating with from initial current I, the moment when we just removed the battery, all the way to when the current goes to zero, because till then, the energy is being transferred. And I want to calculate what's the total energy transferred. Okay, so minus L, I'll keep the I first, and times DI. All right. So over here, L is a constant, I can remove it outside, so minus L comes out. What's the integral of I dI? That comes from maths, it's gonna be I square over two. 
And so if you have troubles with that, feel free to go back and check out our videos on integration. So this will be i squared over two, and we have to put the limits from i to zero. So if you put the upper limit, you get zero, minus i squared over two, and so if you put that together, you'll get l i squared over two. And indeed, notice we get exactly the same expression. So this is the energy stored inside the inductor.